are live. And I am already hitting the wrong buttons. There we go. Somebody was waiting. Who was waiting? And how awesome are you? Let me try to grab the, uh, the link to this and post it up where people can actually find it. Find it. Oh, wow. Delay's not bad. All right, let's pause that. Let's push this out to face balls. And I'm gonna say Joshua Bardwell might not be streaming, but your boy Ciotti is. The stream, oh no, not steaming. Streaming tonight, but your boy Ciotti is. Cool. And let's forget to put the link in there like a jackass. There we go. All right. Cool. Now maybe people will uh, find it and come on in. Very cool. My name, as always, is Aaron Ciotti. All my friends just call me Ciotti, and so should you. Uh, I gotta pause this again. And. Alright, good deal. I got the chat up on the computer, so I don't have to look on the back of the phone for it. And. Sweet. We are golden. This is charging, right? Alright, good deal. So the phone will go dead. Awesome. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Jason says hello. What's going on, Jason? Tonight, we are going to um, put this pile of an Acrobrat back together uh, with these prototype T-motors that are actually already on it. Um, but I, I wanted to tear it apart. So I'd taken the uh, run cam split out of this, uh, and I put a Eagle Micro in it. Um, because I was playing around with having a uh, uh, having it set up as like a Cinewoop with a um, yo Noah what's going on uh, with a um, session mount on top and just the single FPV camera and uh, these motors did really well but I, I just I don't like that it just absolutely cripples the the flight performance of these things, I would rather stick with these uh, micro cams and keep kind of pushing them until they get to the point where they're as good as the um, as good as the uh, GoPros, which will never happen. But hey, it's fun to chase it. So yeah, basically we need to reinstall. So oh, so I also pulled the flight controller um, for over a year. This guy has had a, um, a um, Hobbywing stack, the Hobbywing ESC and the Hobbywing flight controller. I never loved this flight controller mainly because um, it's drilled for M2 and it's one of the more expensive flight controllers so I didn't necessarily want to just go drilling it out to M3 and hope that there's no traces in there that I'd be drilling through and thereby ruining the flight controller. Um, so I stuck with it for a little while. I had it mounted to the underside. Um, so Tommy put these slots here in the battery tray so that you can mount your... Um, initially he was thinking mount the entire stack uh, to the clean plate, which is a huge pain because you've got all your um, uh, motor wires coming to the ESC. What I realized when he sent me the, the Proto way long ago is that... Um, if I just ran a little bit longer of a, um, a breakout cable or whatever the hell they're called, patch cable I guess, uh, from the flight controller to the ESC, I could just put the flight controller up on the clean plate and then have the, you know, of course the VTX and the receiver and the cameras all wired to that, which was fine. Those are just little, um, very bendy, uh, 30 gauge wires. And then just have that cable running down to the ESC, which has all the, uh, the thicker motor wires on it. Um, so that would really give the flight controller the most possible um, amount of movement. So 
did that for a while, then um, I moved the flight controller onto the stack as, you know, per sort of like the normal build. Uh, just, I, I kept kind of changing when I would get a motor that um, wouldn't be tunable, wouldn't uh, produce good footage, lots of jello, blah, blah, blah. Um, I would change something to make sure that some other part of the build wasn't to blame for it. Um, so there's been quite a few iterations of this. Uh, for a while, for the whole time the 1606s were on it actually, the Emacs 1606s, um, I had the flight controller here. It started on the clean plate and then I moved it to here. Didn't fix anything with those motors. Um, this flight controller has had a life of being slammed um, with this rig. So just for the sake of my own sanity, um, I'm going to take it off here. Again, you know, I'm making a change, so I'm going to I'm going to change something else on this at the same time, just to make sure everything's still working right. Um, so I'm going to pull this flight controller. I'm going to put one of these talons on it. Um, the other reason I want to do that is the talon flight controllers have black box, um, and I'm going to uh, Jason. I do. We'll talk about that um, soon. Uh, Having black box on this, on a micro, is really important right now with all the changes being made in Betaflight. Um, and I kind of have Mark Spatz's ear a little bit um, with getting some logs. He's got a micro that he's trying to get tuned in. It doesn't have black box. Um, so I'm going to get him a bunch of black box logs from this and from another rig, uh, another 3-inch micro rig, just so that we, we have some kind of data on where the vibes are happening on... Uh, micro rigs with much higher, you know, double, almost triple the, the RPM, uh, even on like a two and a half inch prop on the two inch prop and the 1.9s and the tiny loop props. I mean, they're <laughs> spinning like four times RPM. So that really shifts where a lot of the vibes happen. Um, and that's the kind of thing that you can only really see in black box. I've spent a ton of time, um, like feel, what I call feel tuning, just tuning by feel, right? Without black box, um, with micros over the years and have kind of proven to myself that there's there's a lot to be had from a tune from a proper tune on a micro they can really be locked in um but every single build is different and especially with micros the components are changing so quickly that um a lot of that experience is kind of out the window especially with the new beta flights they're they're it seems like as i take away filtering uh, it reduces motor heat, which is one of the really strange things that has been happening lately um, with micro tunes. But I digress. With some black box logs, we will get that figured out as to what's going on. Uh, more info on that later. But that's what I'm doing tonight. The um, the build here is, I, I believe this is a production acro. Yeah, I broke the prototype acrobrat acrobrat frame. So this is a production acrobrat frame. Um, I've got the red gummies on both the side plates as well as below the stack. Um, and then this is the Hobbywing 20 amp ESC. It's fine, I mean, it, it works. It hasn't blown up yet. I, I've never really seen a performance difference in, in ESCs. So as long as they don't catch on fire, they get the thumbs up from me. Um, I've got a little 330 UF cap on here. Uh, that back there on top of the RXSR, believe it or not, is the uh, TBS Pro 32 Micro. Um, let's see if I can get some more light on that. Um, yeah, it is hilariously small. Uh, and below it is an RXSR. So like that Pro 32, it's probably hard to see, but that Pro 32 legitimately fits from the end of the plug header on the RXSR to the end of the RXSR itself. It is so incredibly small and it ramps up to 400 milliwatts. Um, super impressed by this little VTX. Whether or not it'll hold up on the long term, no clue. Um, there's not a whole lot of board PCB to soak up the heat that it's going to make at 400 milliwatts, um, which is kind of why I run this down at 200. But you know, if I ever wanted to go far, have, being able to drop jump it up to 400 would be pretty slick to have. Um, so that's all wired in. Everything is is sort of cut to the right length. Um, these are the T motor prototype motors. Let me see if I can um, let me see if I can show you guys how smooth these really are. Um, so let me grab one of what did I do with the Emacs sixteen oh sixes? Is that yeah? So here's the these are going to be sit for sale soon. By the way, if anybody's interested in these sixteen oh sixes, they're totally fine. They they're just uh, they 
they they say right on them. I think racing motor. No, it's a, yeah race spec. I should have known, right? So I mean, the, these are these are race motors. These are these are not freestyle uh, Jello free footage motors. These are race motors. And as race motors, good God, they make some power. Um, so here we go, right? I'm gonna spin it from the top. Can you see how it it notches and stops and stops and stops and stops, right? And I'm I'm turning it pretty hard. When it doesn't stop, it jumps a bunch, right? So that's that notchiness that I'm talking about. Whereas with these guys, there is still notchiness, but it doesn't hit on the notch so hard. And the notches are smaller, right? Like, when I turn this, each little notch is tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny little notch, um, which is the, the bell, the magnets on the bell and the stator interacting. Whereas on this guy, the notches are much bigger and much, well, they're not that much bigger on this one, but they're way more defined. Um, it really slams into place on each one of these no uh, notches. And I think that's why these and all the other race spec motors um, produce so many vibrations on micros and, and are just such a nightmare to tune and produce jello in the already jello prone um, split cameras, turtles, all those guys. So. Um, and that theory has been proven correct twice now, uh, once with these motors and once with the uh, uh, Rotorex uh, Acrobrat 1407 4100 kV motors. Um, so it's, it's not just me, there's something to it. This build, I just changed these motors. I went from the 1606s, which were untunable, unflyable, lots of jello. Not unflyable, but just lots of jello. Um, I switched, I just swapped these motors on and all those problems went away. Um, it actually had pretty much the same amount of power, um, but uh, way, way, way smoother. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's dig in. I'm putting, uh, so another thing that's going to be for sale actually is the OG uh, run cam split for this guy. Um, this is what I've had in it forever. All of the Acrobrat content uh, that's on my page was shot with this. Um, Jason, I have tried soft mounting the motors. It causes more problems than uh, than it helps in my experience. Um, that's another good, really, really good topic, actually. Uh, but this guy's going to be for sale. I really like this guy, and I'm going to miss it because it has the USB port on it. So when you get home, you don't have to screw around with um, removing the memory card for it to get the footage off, you just plug into it with a uh, mini micro B or whatever the second gen, um, the USB cords that we all have 10,000 of, um, to get the footage off, which I really do like, um, but I am slimming this build down as much as I possibly can. Um, these motors are kind of big. I don't necessarily like how um, tall of a stator they are, uh, so they're a little bit too heavy. So I'm going to try to offset that um, by running the single board uh, run cam split uh, on this guy. And then eventually when the new run cam comes out with the dual lenses, maybe I'll switch over to that, but I'm sure that camera will be pretty expensive. Um, but yeah, this guy is for sale, and it even has a switch on it. So you can build yourself a dual camera Acrobrat, wire this, um, solder this rather, up to... The flight controller this is the output in the middle of the switch and then there's a bare uh, pin on the switch that you can solder up your um, FPV camera to so get you a little four or five gram um, FPV camera and that's the only weight penalty is four or five grams for this little guy you've still got the run cam and everything I mean I guess this switch maybe weighs a gram but whatever um, and with this switch, you can flip between the two of them, which you wouldn't think is so important until like this lens vibrates out of focus or you wanna change from 720p to 1080 or 30 to 60 frames a second, stuff like that. Um, so it's really, really handy to have um, this little switch on there. And I used to just like zip tie it uh, to the outside of the frame, like right here. Um, and that was like a perfect little spot for it. Never had a problem with it getting hit or flipped or anything like that. So, yeah, if, uh, if you're interested in the run cam split with some miles on it. Oh, here's the other thing it did too. I actually epoxy. This is a trick that Tommy told me uh, really early on 
um, when we were testing the prototype, uh, I had a, a, maybe one, maybe two of these double stacks fail when they were like Gen 1. Um, and Tommy said one of the old tricks was to epoxy the boards, epoxy all the, uh, the chips onto the board basically. And I did that and it has been totally fine ever since. Uh, so yeah, it's got components epoxied down, which is pretty slick. So this should be super durable. I'll sell it for cheap. Um, hit me up if, uh, if you're interested. Um, I'm already super behind on the chat. Go figure. Let's take a look. Jason says, hello, Noah. Uh, Andy Mon 2010. <laughs> What's going on, Andy? Um, when are you going to give up on three inch and move to four inch? I've been waiting for four inch arms for a long time for, uh, for my frame, uh, the, the mini alien style frame that's coming out on uh, through Rotorius that we've been doing a good amount of work on. Um, so this guy will have four inch arms at some point. I have no idea why, I, when rather. Um, I've been asking them for them for a long time. They will happen for sure. I will uh, I will not rest until I have them. Uh, so, and I can't wait. I've had four, a set of, a few sets of four inch props forever uh, and I've never used them and I've always wanted to. Uh, Spudnik says, hey yo, Spudnik, what up? Great name. Uh, three inch will get as big as five inch. Yes, Jason. Um, with regulations and uh, eventually someone probably being hit in the face with one of these, you know, full-size rigs and suing and it becoming a news story. Yeah, I mean, it's inevitable, right? Um, it's just going to happen. It's going to suck when it happens, but it's going to happen, right? So when that does occur, I'm pretty sure that it'll go the way of, you know, Europe with like some sort of a 250 gram regulation, which there might already be. What are you doing, woman? I'm streaming now. Great. Yeah. What are you doing? More work? Yes. All right, cool. Holler if you need me. I love you. Um, the most understanding woman in FPV right there, Kristen Ciotti, my beautiful wife. Uh, what were we talking about? Things. Uh, what sort of epoxy did I use? Uh, Gorilla Glue. Uh, I just went to Lowe's and got it. And uh, it is very similar to this stuff that I got. So this is, I think it's the same thing. Um, but it's just five minute, whatever, five, six dollar tube of epoxy. Um, squeeze them both into a little dish, mix it up with a toothpick. Um, I've actually been using it for a lot of FPV related stuff too. So these uh, 40 something dollar micro eagles are the best, in my opinion, uh, FPV cam available. And then you can get this RC25G uh, lens and put it on there, which gets you, if you're, you don't want to do this lens if you're, uh, if you have 16 by nine goggles, but if you have four by three goggles, uh, this lens will get you to like 165-ish field of view. Really nice wide field of view um, that I love. The problem is this lens is heavy. Um, it's a big, beautiful piece of glass on this lens. Um, so it makes the whole camera kind of heavy and what happens to me on really, really hard slams is, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the, the little, um, oh God, I don't know what the hell they're called. The little brass bastards that are in here that you thread into, um, they break the, whatever the material this, can, this red is made out of, um, they just smash on a really hard hit. You know, the camera wants to go forward and uh, they kind of break eventually on the front here. So I just take the epoxy and just reinforce I, I Now I reinforce them when I get a new one, but when they break and they rip out, I just push it back in there and put epoxy around it. And like this has saved three, maybe four of these 40 something dollar cameras already. So um, start doing stuff with epoxy. It's strong stuff. Uh, what did I want to do? Oh, I wanted to, okay, so let's get this out of here. Um, yeah, I want to just take this apart so it's easier to ship. And inevitability for um, micros to either become the only thing that's legal or, quite frankly, get so good, so cheap, so quiet, so small, that there's kind of no reason not to fly them. Um, uh, with GoPro not, more than likely, not having any interest in making like a split camera specifically for us, that might be far off unless GoPro goes away. Um, 
man, that karma kicked the shit out of them. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I, th I think as long as there's gonna be a GoPro, um, it's always gonna be better quality than anything that Runcam or, uh, Cadix or Foxier are gonna be able to make just out of pure budget, right? I mean, Go GoPro can just throw a ton more money at, um, at their product development. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know how the, any of these smaller guys are going to make up that gap. They probably won't. But that's okay, uh, because, you know, the, the Tarsier is, like, kind of bordering on session quality. Um, definitely not quite there yet, but in theory, the Runcam dual lens setup with the M12 lens on the HD side um, will be potentially as good as the session, and that'll be pretty interesting. I can't wait to see how that goes. Um, what else do we have? Probably depend, yeah, Noah, same page. Depend on regulations from country to country, for sure. Um, Spudnik, more regulations, better quality micro HD cams, three inches of future. Spudnik knows what's what. Uh, get one to race it, nice. Uh, Jason, yes, soft mounting the motors is something that I try to go back to as often as possible, um, because... I very frequently see people singing its praises. Um, I have yet to have it do anything positive, uh, and I've had a couple times where it has caused negative issues. Uh, basically, in that it's it's adding it's adding another f frequency of vibration to the mix. Um, it's going to make its own. Um, so the length of the arm is one frequency that you're going to get within with vibrations. Um, the motor and prop combo is going to give you another frequency. Frequency meaning 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 166 hertz. Um, you know, hertz being times per second. 166 hertz is 166... I don't know if it's 166 up or it's 166 up and down. I think it's 166 up, so whatever double that hertz is, is the total number of movements. Um, but that, that when I say frequency, that's what I mean. Um, so, you know, you've got the arm creating a frequency, you've got the motor and prop creating a frequency. Um, if you put this whole setup on some unknown, you know, whatever the durometer, whatever the hardness, uh, the squishiness of TPU is, that can potentially create another frequency of vibration that's going into the uh, the flight controller which already has its uh, hands full RPM filtering will um, has either three or four individual filters that it applies to each motor so potentially that could totally fix that um, and maybe make soft mounting worth it again I guess but who the hell knows we'll, we'll figure that out down the road I'll, I'll keep testing that this is the, actually the first time um, and again, it's because I need to get the weight down. This is the first time I'm going to be running the Acrobrat without um, TPU skid guards in the corners. But I ran them upside down so that the uh, the soft mount was on the bottom, and then the protection went up to kind of protect the motor. Because again, I just don't like soft mounting. I especially don't like soft mounting on this frame because there are only three uh, motor attachment points. So what happens is you have the soft mount up here. You tighten the two. Um, bolts that are opposite of each other which pulls the motor down even into the soft mount but then when you tighten this outside bolt it pulls the motor out and it cants the motor outwards a little bit on, on all sides and that just flies like ass um, so that's the big reason on this particular frame that I don't run the soft mounts but I have plenty of other frames with standard four hole mounting um, where I have run soft mounts to no avail Long answer to a short question, but a really good question. I love that question. Um, everybody should try soft mounting if they're having vibration issues, because it might help. And if it helps, then that was a really easy, cheap, possibly free solution if you do it like Johnny FPV did it with uh, a couple layers of um, electric tape. Um, when are you coming out with a micro HD? Talked about working on one uh, for an English company with Joshua. Micro Trek, uh, what do you mean by a micro HD? Do you mean a micro HD frame or a micro HD camera? I, I think, my guess is you mean a micro HD frame 
Um, and I don't know when that's coming. It, it was sold as the um, CB3 uh, and the CB2.5 and the CB1.2 uh, or 122 rather um, with Rotorius under uh, the previous ownership. Uh, now with the new ownership, we've made some tweaks to it and we are going to be, um, uh, it, it's also going to be a removable arm version, which is going to be nice. The previous ones were all unibody, and um, the way that I fly, you can absolutely break a 160-gram um, micro with a really strong 3-millimeter unibody. The removable arms will also allow you to go from a 2.5-inch two, two to a 3-inch to a 4-inch, hell, maybe even down to a 2-inch. Um, it's kind of no reason not to just cut those arms. Um, which is awesome. I mean, cause like, I remember when, when I was in a, a, a two and a half inch unibody, I wanted to go up to three inch and I couldn't, it, it wouldn't spring, it wouldn't swing the props. Um, so I had to take the whole thing out of there and put it into a whole new, uh, unibody base plate, which was just a total pain in the ass, of course. Um, so lots of really cool advantages to the removable arm. I, I wish I had a better handle on when it's going to come out. Um, but, um, it, it's going to be worth it. it I, I promise. It's also kind of interesting too, right? So with a unibody, uh, which is, this is one of my old unibodies, um, with a unibody, right? So you've got your three millimeter arms, which is great. That's, that's the right thickness for the arms. You really don't need a three millimeter center section though. Like this center section, especially in the back and the front, it just doesn't get loads really put on it. Uh, most of the load comes through the arms because those are the longest levers that are going to really crank down. Um, so what we found is that it's just wasted weight. It's just a waste of weight to have three millimeter carbon all in here. You only really want it on the arms. So interestingly, the weight of this unibody um, and same exact geometry, same everything, right? The weight of this unibody is pretty much exactly the same as the weight of the removable arm version. Um, the, the offset is, so we, we go to a, um, a thinner center section, right? Because like we talked about, it doesn't need the thickness or the strength. Um, you do gain a sandwich plate, but that's fairly small. Um, and you do gain hardware. And those things offset the weight difference of having that three mil carbon on the inside. And then from that point, it's just all pluses. Um, of everything we were just talking about, removable arms, um, you know, even if you're not going from two and a half inch to three inch, you break an arm, boom, boom, two bolts, pop it out, slap the new one in there. Um, the one big thing that we're working on, and, and basically the delay right now, is the lockup in the middle of these guys. Um, when these prototypes were cut, the tolerances aren't tight enough on the lockup in the middle here. Um, and what Noah found, I have not flown one enough to, uh, to do this, but what Noah found is that eventually these M2 uh, screws that go up through the stack, um, since that's a smaller point of contact with the hole in the arm, it'll eventually kind of like wallow itself out um, and the arms will start to wiggle a little bit. So between these tolerances on the inside not being tight enough and that being M2, um, we you know figured out that over time and tons of abuse, uh, it will loosen these arms up, so we wanted to fix that. So we're, we're tightening up the lockup in the middle here, maybe changing the shape of it, and we're also talking about maybe going to M3 um, on these guys, so that it's, a, uh, it's, an M3, it's two M3s that are holding the arm in. Between doing those two things, it should be absolutely bulletproof. Like I said, I smashed the hell out of these things, and I have not had these arms really significantly loosen up yet, um, but I trust Noah. He's a great pilot um, and a really smart guy. Um, so totally trust him that uh, he put enough miles on his to get that to open up. And uh, yeah, that kind of stuff is really important to me. I, I, if, if I'm going to be attached to anything, um, I, you know, I, I want it to be absolutely as good as it possibly can be. Um, so yeah, that's the deal there. Ugh, let's put those back up there and see if there's another couple questions. I got to try to work while I'm answering these questions. Uh... <laughs> Oh man, I'm, oh, there's a bunch. Okay, <laughs> Guillermo's here, what's up brother? Bearded, 
bearded paddler. Nice. What sort of epoxy did you use? All right, good. Uh, Guillermo says, iFlight Cinebe came with 1103 10,000s for 3S. Is it too much? It should not be, Guillermo. Um, on those tiny whip props, you should be totally fine spinning uh, the hell out of them. Bearded Paddler, sorry, one more. So do you just put it on the solder joints? You just cover the whole board? Oh, yeah, so I covered the whole board. I tried to keep it away from the solder points, actually, because the, once the epoxy is on top of the solder, um, it is you're never soldering to that again. So the soldering points I specifically avoided, and I just basically coated all of the little chips so that, you know, in a humongous slam that generates hundreds of Gs, um, none of these little chips want to move around or pop off or anything like that. So yeah, if, if you're going to epoxy, um, try to epoxy the chips down um, and just keep it away from any solder points, uh, any pads rather, because you'll never get it off the pads. Of course, keep it away from the, uh, the mounting holes and whatnot. Keep it away from the... Uh, lots of stuff to keep it away from. Just kind of study the board before you do it to look for anything that, you know, when in doubt, don't epoxy it like the microphone, you know, no real reason to epoxy that. Um, but yeah, and again, like I said, I, I don't know if that helps. I mean, they might have just had, this might just be a version two board that was, they fixed some problems on, but um, it didn't hurt it. It didn't, I was, I was kind of worried about it overheating, um, but it did not have any problems like that. So yeah, there's that. Uh, only thing I ever got with soft mounting motors was hot motors. Yep, there you go, Noah. Not just me. Uh, what's the all-up weight on your Rotorius and what size motors? So both the one with the turtle and the one with the Caddx are at one, uh, 140 dry. And then with the battery that I run, which is a 4S450, it's going to be anywhere from 180 to 190. Um, the, the tattoos are the lightest but the worst. GNBs are the best and a little bit heavier. China Hobby Lines are totally fine but a little bit heavier than that. Um, so yeah, 140 dry for full HD, full 20 by 20 stack, um, capacitor, uh, 200 milliwatt smart audio VT, all the stuff, all the things. Um, yeah, and 1306 motors, which uh, are the best that we've got right now, but I'm really crossing my fingers for 1406 or 1405s in the future. <sighs> what else do we have? Microtech, you are welcome. What size batteries? We just talked about that. Uh, RPM filter is a bank of 36. That's it. Yeah, first three harmonics fit. Uh, roll pitch, you all fit each motor. Number of harmonics, harmonics notched is adjustable in the CLI. There we go. Good info, Quadrophenia. I appreciate that, man. Um, so yeah, three per. God, love it. Uh, Jason, what frame is that? I'm assuming it's the one that I was just holding, which we just talked about. If you didn't catch that, Ask the question again, and I'll answer it. Uh, Noah beats the crap out of it. Yes, he does. As well you should. Thunder, what's up, dude? Good to have you in here. Uh, instead of epoxy, why not hot glue? I just didn't think it would... Um, I just didn't think it would be hard enough. Um, to be honest, I didn't even think about using it. But now that you asked that question, I wouldn't have used it because I just don't think it would be... It's got that gumminess to it. Um, yeah, it'd probably work. I don't know. Tommy said he used to epoxy stuff and it worked well, and epoxy is easy enough to work with, or I just said to hell with it. Um, and there's kind of no reason to not, as long as you don't get it on those spots where you don't want to get it, um, it it's fine. It, it doesn't matter that it's permanent. You know, if if uh, if I ever need to get at this part of the board, it's over. I, I can't solder to any of these um, tiny little traces. It looks like on this board I only did one side, which is fine. In theory, that's a 50% better chance that it won't implode um flying split over the tarsier not at all thunder i'm just waiting for the um uh the dual lens version of the split to come out i have this with me and i need to give um and want to give vivian a little bit more feedback on these prototype t motors um so i'm just throwing this in here because i don't want to tear that other rig apart that's got the tarsier in it um so i'll just put this on here for the time being uh, on the Acrobrat frame, it's very easy to take this in and out, um, which is another really nice thing about that I like about this frame. It's very easy to work on. A lot of times, micro frames are a complete nightmare to, nightmare to work on because they're just so goddamn small um, and fiddly. 
Uh, Ciotti for Rotor Riot. Thanks, Ian. I appreciate that, man. Hey, uh, um, shoot, uh, take one of my videos and submit it to their uh, thing. Po post, do something. I don't know. I'd love to be uh, more involved with Rotor Riot. I'd love to have something like a Hype Train sponsorship. Um, I really love their motors. Um, just had, my wife and I just had a little kitten get super, super, super sick and um, had some pretty unbelievable vet bills pop up here in the last uh, month or two. So in terms of like keeping my shit up in the air, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But I will make do. That being said, some kind of a sponsorship would be super, super cool to kind of help me out with that. So uh, yeah, man, spread the word. Spread the word of Ciotti possibly being a sponsored pilot somewhere, man. Love it. Alright, so what I'm going to try to do here is, oh yeah, that's going to work perfect. Alright, so I'm going to figure out what height standoff I need for this guy, and I can pr I pretty much already know what it's going to be. It's going to be the ones that come with it. So, um, Runcam gives you this little pad, which most people throw away. Um, with this, uh, uh, the new version 2 single board, and uh, it's, it transfers heat. This guy here is what generates most of the heat on this, and uh, this little pad will help it uh, to transfer some of that heat. So what I like to do is push that guy against the carbon to put some of the heat from this into the harbin, carbon to use the carbon as a, uh, as a heat sink. Um, but to do that right, you got to make sure you have the right height standoff. Um, you don't want to push it too hard into the carbon um, and have it squish out or, I don't know, I guess it would be fine. Um, more importantly, you don't want it up too high so it's not touching because then it'll just fly out. Uh, doo -doo -doo. See how he does not need Rotor Riot. Oh, Guillermo. I'm, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to plead the fifth now. <laughs> um, Noah, epoxy cause any heat issues? I have not had it. I've had the epoxy on three 30 by 30 ESCs that have been fine. Um, I've epoxied the back of a bunch of these Runcam uh, Micro Eagles because there's one chip on the bottom that can get knocked off in really hard hits if it if the camera rotates in the frame. Um, and I've done a couple of these Runcam split boards and I've yet to have any single component fail due to heat. Um, the two of the DYS boards that I epoxied failed but I found out later that those are the DYS ESCs that everybody had issues with. Um, I think it's like their 30 amp. Um, so I can't really blame the epoxy on that. Uh, nice. I haven't driven his Lotus yet. We, um, we went up to Blood Mountain and blasted around a uh, bunch of the really fun roads up there, Wolf Pen Gap, a couple of the other ones. Um, but I was too busy driving my wife's um, awesome little Mazda 2. Uh, to worry about driving somebody else's car. I, um, many of you guys don't know this, especially if you haven't dug to the, dug deep in my, um, YouTube channel, but FPV is kind of a, that sounds weird to say, but it's, it's kind of like a secondary-ish hobby to me. Um, motorsports is, is really my main love, and it's the hobby that I've been into for the longest. Um, FPV was actually a hobby that I picked up to kind of just save money and have something that would get the adrenaline going, get the creative juices flowing um, for cheap. And, uh, but yeah, for, I mean, hell, since high school, so we're talking like 20 years now, um, I've just been into cars. That's just been, been my thing. Um, my parents handed me down a Fox Body Mustang when I was old enough to drive. It was a heap of shit, but, I mean, it was awesome to have a Mustang at 17 years old, um, even though it was a four-cylinder. But, uh, a Mustang's a Mustang, right? Beats a, uh, beats a K car, I guess. Well, that's arguable. Um, yeah, man, motorsports is my main love. So, and, so, of course, you know, you start off as a uh, high school kid getting into cars with, like, stereo nonsense and you go down that road and then you go to drag racing and some people will get um will stick with drag racing and just 
keep pouring money into awesome builds that pull wheel stands. I kind of went a different direction. I, I drag raced, um, at this point I had a 96 Cobra, 96 Mustang Cobra, um, and I just didn't like the whole, like I, I got to the point at the drag strip where um, I couldn't drive the car any faster. Um, it was running mid 13s with just simple bolt-ons on street tires and that was kind of it. I mean, there's really, at that point, not much you can do other than spend more money um, to go faster. The, the saying is, how fast do you want to spend instead of how fast do you want to go? Um, and I just dropped a spacer in this horrible carpet that this apartment has, and it's gone forever. Uh, hopefully I have an extra. But, uh, yeah. Oh, and I don't have an extra, so. Um, so I looked for motorsports where you would actually have, um, a little bit more driver skill involved and autocross is what I found because I was also looking on a budget. Um, and so I started autocrossing, absolutely fell in love with it. You guys can help me search. First person to call out where this thing is gets $20. Um, absolutely fell in love with autocrossing, uh, rookie of the year my first year uh, for the South Jersey region, and then um, the co-chair of the region, well both co-chairs actually, were, um, were moving on to uh, wheel to wheel uh, racing with SCCA, Sports Car Club of America, and uh, the region needed somebody to run the autocross program, and I was just so like kind of in love with it that I said I'll give it a shot and uh, ran the entire South Jersey region for a couple of years uh, when I was ready to get out of it because it's a lot of work it's volunteer work um, when I was ready to get out of it I had kind of by that point fallen in love with instructing uh, we get a lot of new folks you know getting them so that they can comfortably drive the racetrack and start to, to run it faster and making sure they're safe and and all that good stuff uh, I spent almost 10 years as the instructor chair, or the instructor chief, rather, of South Jersey's region, and basically what I did is um, trained up like 11, I think, other uh, instructors so that basically at any given event, we ran events like every third or every second or third Sunday, um, at any given event, everybody on site could have an instructor ride with them and like the the prevailing theory was that instructors were just for new folks um, but I developed a bunch of bad habits at one point um, which one of the, I was taking one of the uh, longtime instructors from the North Jersey region up by New York um, for a ride in oh my god I found it uh, was taking him for a ride and halfway through the run he's like, Siati, what are you doing, dude? And uh, he's like, remember this corner. I'm like, okay. At the end of the run, he's like, dude, you're you're just entering and just late apexing everything, like, really, really drastically, way, way, way too drastically um, for what you need to. And he was absolutely right, and it, it kind of made me realize, and, and in watching some of the other really talented drivers in that region, I kind of realized they, they, they were falling into some of the same traps and uh, picking up some bad habits. So, uh, yeah, it was really, really cool to um, get, a, get all those, those really talented drivers um, that had worked really hard to kind of build that craft, uh, trained up as instructors so they could share that and then we would all instruct with one another and, and it was just a really really cool um atmosphere and uh experience there i don't remember why we were talking about that that was one hell of a tangent that i full-on don't remember was it a comment? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Guillermo asked about Steel's Lotus, right. Yeah, so when I'm driving, like, it's, uh, I'm, um, as much as I love driving other people's cars as an instructor on the racetrack, um, up in the mountains, uh, 
it's that's a different thing up there. So if if I'm going to be up there in, in a public road, you know, with no runoff and and hundred foot drop, um, if I drive somebody else's car, I'm not going to have fun with it. I'm I'm just going to limp it around and and um, relax with it. What about using thermal paste to help with transfer heat? That would probably work, Jason, but I assume it would just go absolutely everywhere. Um, they make thermal tape. Uh, Unifies come with a little a little rectangle of thermal tape. If you go on Amazon and search for thermal tape, you'll find rolls of it for like eight bucks. Um, Quadrophenia, glad that Kitty is doing well. You and I both, my man. Uh, hi everyone, Mr. Tux, what's up? Fox bodies are the bomb. They certainly are, Jason. Um, can't wait to uh, get one, get another one someday. Uh, Guillermo, I am a project manager. Um, so after the salespeople uh, sell someone something, uh, if there's continued support, that's where I jump in. Build the relationship, make sure that product is working correctly, um, and just kind of be their go-to person uh, with, like I said, sort of like continued support and anything else they need. Uh, it came from a background in sales, fresh out of college. Um, I had a couple sales gigs, and I didn't like how competitive they were, and I didn't like the how it was just cutthroat, right? Because it's it's my money, um, and having another sales guy take my money is, of course, unacceptable. So there were some things about uh, sales that I really didn't like, so that's why I didn't stay there, but project management has... So with project management, there's also the opportunity for a lot of upsells, um, which I love, and that's what I'm really good at. Like, figure out what is going to make you more successful with my product and get you into that um, so that I am kept honest in that um, as you do better, I do better because I'm literally in it to help you grow um, rather than just turning and burning, which is all too common in regular old sales because you typically don't get uh, returns, return customers. Miata suck, Dividing says. Fuck you. <laughs> I think you know that I have a Miata. Um, uh, ZDK Root. Oh, hey, look. Searching for a screw in their carpet is pretty much my own life. Jason, did you really see it? Closer to the square in the back. I swear to God, if you really saw it, I'm going to stab you. If this shitty little camera on this phone can see it and transmit it through the internet, um, then I fail. Try putting an AR together and launching your front takedown detent across the room. Um, so, dividing after... Well... Kind of before motorsports, I got into airsoft for a bunch of years, six, seven-ish years, and uh, my buddy Brad, who now is, who's still my best friend in the world, and got me into this damn hobby, um, thank God, <laughs> he and I went full bore into airsoft, and within a couple years, we were running a, sh a custom gun shop out of my apartment um, building. So this is like early 2000s. This is before anybody really knew what Airsoft was. Um, we were getting Tokyo Mirai a, uh, automatic electric uh, AGs from overseas and upgrading them to whatever the customer wanted. But I mean, typically we'd put it up to 400 feet per second with two O's, which was the legal limit uh, and most of the field limits as well. Uh, and then we would try to push it up as close to 30 dBs a second as possible. Um, and yeah, we, we, we kind of subsidized the cost of the hobby with the shop. So the, we didn't make any money at the end of the day, but we, you know, the money that we were making would pay for all of our stuff. Um, which, oddly enough, is kind of where Joshua realized that I could get to um, with FPV, which is kind of cool. And I really appreciate the push from all you guys um to oh what a segue to get a patreon set up so that uh if people want to send a couple bucks to fund more micro goodies and more reviews and more flying and edits and all that stuff you can so again thanks to the community for pushing me to do that because i absolutely would not have and here comes a link into the chat with my patreon i don't know how to use it yet so it looks terrible but i'll figure it out um, assemble inside a large box. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'll never do that, but that's a really good idea. 
Um, razor blade to complex. Oh, okay. You guys are talking about ARs. Uh, all right. What else do we have? Driving better than sex. All right. If you say so. <laughs> 95 Cobra R. So that's funny, man. That's that's kind of what I was uh, building. I, I had a 96 Cobra. Um, and that was sort of a part of the build philosophy is to get it close to the 95R. I had the 95R re wheels, the uh, two sets actually of the legit R58 wheels. Um, and uh, it was on like 295s and all the bolt-ons and then I went through pretty much the entire Maximum Motorsport catalog um, to get it going around corners really well. That car was a blast. I sold it um, right before we moved up here from Charleston, actually, um, because I, I just let it sit for too long. I let it sit under a car cover for too long, and it just went to hell. But that's another story for another day. Um, what else do we have? Grab 95 Cobra for their $65,000 cars. I'm surprised they aren't already. Um, had a shot at one two years ago, 25K, but I had 2015 payments to make. Yeah, I've, I've driven a couple. Of, I, I've driven a few of the 95s. I've also driven the 2000R. Um, 95s were very underwhelming. 2000 R was pretty special. Um, but, yeah. 1988 2.3 turbo. They didn't exist. Did they? Was the S... Oh, no, the SVO was an 88. Or no, the SVO was an 86, I thought. 85, 86? Nah, whatever. It's all the same damn car. Um, yeah, the SVOs were gnarly. Uh, living in Cali, years buying things before they were banned. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Ford GT before the price jump. Good luck with that. Uh, iFlight can use your help. What do you mean, Guillermo? Is that in reference to a previous comment? What's your last comment? What do you do for a living? Uh, you talking about iFlight could use my help as a project manager? Message me if, if so. Um, I'm not in love with, with my PM job right now. Uh, reached your first Patreon goal. I did ZD. That's just because I made it $10. <laughs> and, uh, Bardwell and my mother actually <laughs> jumped on. Um, single child syndrome, super overprotective mother. Uh, somebody out there gets what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're there. So I guess according to my first goal, we have to do something what did I make my first goal? We'll do something cool. So we're going to have to do something cool. I'll think of it and put it on there. Um, uh, yo, there you go. ZD says, what's the cool thing going to be? Yeah, you, <laughs> help me figure it out, guys. Um, 95 Cobra R hood on my 95. Oh, nice. Uh, that's funny. I did all the maximum parts as well, except for the torque arm. I didn't want to lose the, uh, the ground clearance. Um, dream car. Man. I don't know, you know, I don't, I tend to not think about those things. I'm, I'm a, a realist kind of through and through, very scientific minded, um, raised without religion, um, kind of bordering on anti-theism to be totally honest with you guys. Um, hopefully that doesn't offend anybody, but I'm an oversharer. Uh, yeah, I, huh. Could be, could be some sort of a cater ham or OG Lotus Super 7 or something like that. Um, Pro Touring Classic Mustangs are cool, but I got to drive a bunch of them at, um, we hosted an event for the big Pro Touring group. I forget what they're called, um, but we hosted an event for them. And I got to drive a bunch of really, really well-built, really, really fast, um, super impressive Pro Touring-built uh, Mustangs. And my God, even with everything thrown at them, they are still heaps of shit. Um, they just, it's just brutal. I mean, just every single input is impossible, and there's no feel. Um, 60s and 70s and 80s were a rough time. Um, I think the 90s are really kind of the golden age of um, cheap performance cars. Um, maybe an FD. An, an FD might be only an FD um, with uh, a rotary that lasts more than like 30,000 miles, though. 
Um, so, you know, Unicorn FD. But, yeah, it, it might be an FD. That, that might be where I would have to go uh, on the dream car thing with an infinite budget to build it tastefully. That was kind of the, the my Miata build was loosely based around making it look as close to an FD as possible. And um, I know that I did it because I've had a ton of people ask me if it's an RX-7. And it always sucks to have to say, no, nah, it's just a Miata. But, uh, you know, I ain't got that FD money, you kidding me? Alright, let's get this figured out. What did I just pull this out of the fives? Yeah, I'm two by five. Uh, which, Jason, I have zero concept of the racing community. Um, the Rotorious frames are always really good, and I know that they do have pod-style X racing frames. Um, join the, the Rotorious FPD Underground. Um, I want to say it's called the Crook, maybe? Maybe it's called the Spec? Um, but they've got one. Those guys love them. Um, that'd be a good one to check out. Don't really know what else. Racing is just not my thing. Uh, opinion on 3D printed antenna mounts for the Acrobrat. Spudnik, I hate 3D printed antenna mounts, mainly because they're way too heavy. I don't understand why everybody makes them so beefy and chunky and, like, thick. If um, Actually, Rotorius made, uh, right before Jack uh, left, he made... It would take me a while to find it, but he made a, an Axie mount that was the most minimal thing I've ever seen, and it was just perfect. It was like a strip of TPU, and then just the thinnest little circle to hold the Axie, the, the old school, a uh, little bit bigger Axie. Um, that's the only one I've ever seen that I would even consider running. Um, the other big reason I don't like running them is they tend to put the, the head of the, um, do I have one? They put the, yeah, it's on the quad. They put the head of the uh, antenna like down here, which is just terrible. Because when you start coming back at yourself, especially if you flatten out, the head of the uh, work that's doing all the work is going to be hidden by the uh, battery, uh, which really sucks. So I I try to get them up as high as I can. I wish somebody I, I wish somebody would make these uh, UFL guys with longer uh, with longer leads on them. I would love to hang this guy all the way up here. I know that they don't. I know why they don't, well, I think I know why they don't, um, which is because they're kind of floppy, like even with this down that wants to kind of move around. I fix that by putting an extra piece of heat shrink up here, um, and I don't shrink it down, uh, which really helps it be rigid, except for on these small ones when I forget to do it. Uh, what else? 95 is 14 to, oh, 14.1. I thought you were saying it was 14 to 1 compression, Devon. I was like, holy hell. Um, 14198, that sounds about right for a 302 SN95. Um, 240 of the rear wheels, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Pagani, yeah. Yeah, Pagani cars are amazing, but they are awful fancy. Uh, three rotor FD would be nice. Man, three rotors are kind of heavy. I don't know. I think a, a nice, like, 350 wheel horsepower 13B would be right there maybe 400 um, but I think that starts to to kind of push the limits of reliability um, which when you get into road racing and autocross and stuff like that where you're driving a car in anger for more than 10 seconds at a time um, reliability becomes your big boring best friend so we've got yellow, black, red. Somebody type yellow, black, red into the comments. I am going to... So since I have to... Well, you know, I should explain what I'm doing. Because this is an FPV live stream, right? With 17 people that build these things watching. So when I build, um, my builds take a long time. Um, I get poked fun at for how long it takes me to get build done. But, the reason why is micros suck to build, and you have to find every millimeter of free space that you can with them, 
Um, specifically, I really try to drop the stacks down as low as possible um, to bring the battery down as close to the prop line as possible. Um, what's going on with this? Why are you being a dick soldering iron? For no reason either. Um, it's one of the other cool things about the epoxy. If you slip off a solder joint, you just hit the epoxy and it's, it's totally fine. Uh, so yeah, my builds take so long because I, I basically just look at like every possible orientation. God damn it, I hate when I skip steps thinking that I can just half-ass it and it doesn't work out. Um, so I spend a lot of time placing everything in and rotating, rotating, rotating. Look at where everything is. Look how everything is going to interact with one another. Um, you know, try to try to use up every little bit of free space. So, like for example, right, this flight controller. When you look at it flat, it's got a big tall plug header here, and it's got a USB port and this little switch. Those are the tall spots. So I'll try to figure out a way that if the ESC has something sticking up on it, I can put what's sticking up on the ESC even with one of these flat sides. So I can kind of use that wasted space there. Um, or sometimes I'll flip it over and look at the bottom. You know, this, this chip and this cap are kind of tall on this side, but they're nowhere near as tall um, as these guys. So maybe I'll run this thing, you know, right side up. I, I, um, I do kind of like running them upside down and hiding these things because there's almost always something sticking up on the, on the ESC that's going to get in the way. Um, so lately I've been running a lot of these flight controllers upside down um, and what I also like about that is this side being against the battery strap I guess it doesn't matter on the brat um, because the battery because the way the battery strap goes but on most rigs with the battery strap running under the top plate I would rather that battery strap be rubbing against this side rather than this side trying to catch on the USB port and rip that off trying to catch on this just being a general pain in the ass um, so lately I've actually been running a lot of flight controllers upside down and it takes one second to correct that in, uh, in beta flight. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I've, all I've really done so far is figure out with this split board exactly how I want to orient it. Do I want to put it with, you know, first make sure I have enough length on this cable, um, for the camera. Um, you know, do I want the, um, um, memory card port going out this side, going out that side. Um, one of the easily easy determining factors is the fact that I want to do the thing with the, the heat transfer foamy jobber so I have to put this down so that essentially at that point it only gives me two options because I don't want my USB port facing backwards or forwards right because then I couldn't get the damn thing out um, and this single board doesn't have a USB port to pull the footage off so absolute requirement having it going that way or this way if it's going that way the buttons are on this side and this cable comes forward like this. There's a cover that they give you that's going to hold this down. Um, and then basically, when we line up one of our side plates, we're going to see, okay, it's going to mount up in here. So there's plenty of extra cable here. No real reason in terms of the cable to need to run this the other way. Um, this puts the cable closer. We don't need all that extra cable. What it's actually going to happen is it's going to go out the back. It's going to get held down by this cover, and then it's going to loop back forward, which is not necessarily a bad thing. The flip side of not having enough cable is having too much cable. Um, I actually kind of like this. It's going to hold it down here, and again, put the side plate up and hold it up. And now that there's just a lot less cable flopping all around in there, um, and there's really kind of no other reasons to not um, orient it this way. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just taking one quick second to think about any other reason why I might not want this pointing this way. But everything's symmetrical up here, you know what I mean? There's, there's nothing on the left or right. So this is how it's going to go. Um, so what I was doing was desoldering the um, oh, and look at that. I didn't even need to do it. Yellow, black, red. Thank you, Spudnik. I didn't need to... Um, I thought I was going to have... So these were pointing out this direction, and I thought for some reason I was going to have to then fold them over the other way. Um, but now that I hold this in place, 
I actually want them to go that same direction. I want them to go out the back. So I'll just solder them right back up. And, oh look, the uh, run cam silk screen, that's nice of them. So uh, we'll just, you know, undo what we just did, no big deal. It's not like that doesn't happen 7,000 times a minute in this hobby. Where'd that little spool solder go? SOLDER! Alright, so let's get this in here. And before I do that, let's see if there's a question I can talk about. So yeah, ZDK Root says, I saw a post today of RCM Power 1204s, 5000 KV. I saw that as well. That is a really interesting uh, size. The 1206s from Gep RC got a lot of love, um, but I don't like staters. 06 is kind of right on the border for me. Um, 07s, I, I've yet to fly an 07 stator that I liked. It's, it's just too much power up at the top of the throttle um, for the way that I want to fly. Um, but yeah, 1204 is super interesting. I think that is going to be a perfect 2.5 inch uh, prop uh, motor with something like a 4S. 450mAh battery. I'm sure that was ear shattering for your guy for you guys. You're welcome. You're welcome, and I apologize. Of course, the ground pads it can be a pain in the ass. This is interesting. Usually, when I build, it's quiet. There's maybe some music on. It's kind of my zen. I can just chill, focus on what I'm doing. Um, Whereas I'm focused on talking right now, which is, it's funny, as an instructor, so the first thing that I would have to teach the, uh, the instructors at the racetrack was how to talk and drive and talk and get thrown around in a car, because it's way harder than you'd think, um, specifically when you're driving, um, and it was, I mean, when I say teach, I basically mean tell them to just do it over and over again. <laughs> Um, but there's a, there's a couple little things that I was able to help out with. And uh, FPV is kind of the same thing. It, I, um, I've gotten used to talking while I fly, but man, you're just thinking about so many things. Uh, so I guess I'm going to have to do the same thing with building. Is uh, force myself to learn to talk and... Okay, I did it right. Whew! Talk and build. Uh, Emacs 1206 coming soon. Ooh, didn't hear about that. That's cool. This thing he's built took him two days. My builds usually take me five days. I'll do like half an hour and just walk away from it. Uh, aren't the motors you're putting on right now seven mil staters? They are ZD, and my biggest complaint about these motors is they make too much power and pull too many amps. Uh, seeing instructors grab... Wheel B from Pat, yeah, right, <laughs> from the passenger seat. Yeah, it, it, it's it's definitely a freaky thing. I used to always tell my students um, right up front, like, if I absolutely have to, I will grab that wheel. Your instinct will be to fight me. Um, if you can get past that, let go, and I will be grabbing it to do something that benefits us both, basically. What's up, Kristen? I'm just looking. Oh. I can't find my glasses, so I'm on the quest. Kristen lost her glasses, guys. <sighs> it's daily, the daily glasses hunt. All right, so let's get this on here. Don't fall off, you little jerk. Don't fall off. <laughs> <laughs> she just said she should be like, an, she should go old lady in, in her early 30s and, uh, Get one of those chain things. <laughs> All right. Uh, probably. ZDK. Didn't somebody say probably in the back by the square thing already? Is my chat going crazy? Uh, 1306 Emax motors are fantastic. Noah. Um, huge props to him. He introduced me to those by unbelievably graciously sending me a set. Um, 
at a time that I was super broke uh, to fly because he completely lost his mind at some point and bought like five or four sets of, of 1306s. Um, and damn, was he right. They feel really good. I was all about the um, 1304s coming up to that point. And he was like, dude, trust me. And I didn't trust him at first because I was just so taken with the 1304s, but my God, was he right. Um, I will say, though, that was around the time that I was going from non-HD micros to HD micros, and you basically gain at least 10 or so grams when that happens. Um, so that was part of the reason that I did need a bigger motor. Um, but he told me it just it's just a more grunty kind of motor and it just kind of feels better and, and he was just absolutely dead on the money um they just feel great um i did notice though when flying the turtle um three inch back to back with the tarsier three inch that uh with my five inch rigs on saturday i guess it was that the 1306s do still lack a little bit of uh, down low grunt that I'm looking for. So as good as they are, and most people would never notice this, um, I am definitely still on the hunt for a 14.05 or a 14.06. So here's what's going on here. Run cam made the corners of this thing, they recessed them down and it's really making getting these nuts on a pain in the ass. So here is my solution to this. Flip the screws and nuts upside down. Run the screw down from the top and then put the nut on the bottom with some Loctite to make sure it doesn't fall off. What else do we have here? Oh god, you guys are going ham. Uh, derpa 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 Ever see a big change in noise or tune on micros with multi-shot versus D-shot? I've never gone back to multi-shot other than during the month or two that um, Skito, when, when Kristen and I came down here to stay with him and hang out and check out apartments in this area, um, he gave me a Flight 1 stack to try. So for the next two or so months, I worked with him and Willard on getting that to work properly. Um, unsuccessfully, unfortunately, but that's the only time I have touched multi-shot. Uh, my very first FPV rig was on D-shot. You know what? No, it wasn't. The OG White Baby Hawk came with multi-shot, but there was a mod you could do um, to put it on the D-shot, and I did that mod pretty early on. And, uh, yeah. That's interesting, though. I've heard that. I've heard from a couple people that there might be something to that. Um, so, I don't know. I don't think I could sacrifice turtle mode. That's why I would never do it. Um, I constantly get stuck in trees and stuff. Um, I truly cannot imagine uh, quads without turtle mode. I just can't. Uh, yes, bud. D-Shot 600 on everything, actually, for me. Um, even my 5-inch rigs with 32-bit ESCs, I still run them at D-Shot 600. Uh, Guillermo went to exotic racing in Vegas. Guy next to him was talking nonstop. The instructor? Yeah, that's, that's what we do. <laughs> that's our job. There is a point, though, where um, you got to shut up and, and let people actually drive and focus. Um, but... Yeah, that exotic thing is supposedly pretty fun. Right. There we go. Okay, so let's get this thing in here. Let's stop fucking around. Uh, Betaflight 3.5, do you turn on iTerm Relax or iTerm re Rotation? iTerm Relax. iTerm Rotation is for line of sight pilots who get weirdness when they're doing funnels. Um... 
funnel is basically an orbit, a, a really extreme angle orbit. Uh, yeah, you don't want that on a on an FPV rig. Two day kart racing school, yeah, man, that's uh, kart racing is where it's at. There is a good reason that every single Formula One driver ever, more than likely, um, came from karting. It is the real deal. The purity, as Marty and Moog would say from uh, Mighty Car Mods. Which, you're, if you're a car guy and you're not watching Mighty Car Mods, get your ass over there. Leave this stream, actually, and go start watching Marty and Moog right now, because that is the best... Um, the best car show on TV. Battery leads are... 20 gauge. Uh, Joshua has a video on how battery leads don't matter nearly as much as we thought they did. And I agree with him. My father has been an electrical engineer for... Hell, 30 plus years, I guess. Forever. Um... <laughs> In my mind, right? It's forever. Uh, and uh, he kind of said the same thing. He, he basically said, look, if the... And this goes for the whole 4S to 6S thing as well. But I recently uh, flew Jamie's uh, QAVR, which has the Vanover motors on it. And that was the first 6S rig I'd ever flown. And I was... So those motors make humongous power, which is what I attribute this to more than anything else. But I will say that I've never felt a setup um, track the throttle as accurately as that. Which I think is what everybody says when everybody says that 6S has more torque. I believe that's what they're talking about. Um, and that was kind of fascinating because what my dad basically said when I asked him about the whole voltage thing is, um, I explained the whole situation. He goes, all right, well, is, is anything getting hot? Is like, is the XT60 getting hot? Are the wires getting hot? Is there heat anywhere in the system? And when I said no, he goes, well, then there's really no reason. I mean, the only real reason to bump the voltage up would be um, if there were uh, losses via heat because um, that's pretty much the only way that you get electronic you get loss with electricity um outside of the work that it's doing right the in this in our case the thrust that it's producing um but i don't know the when when we what i don't know is if there's heat on the xt60 or on the battery leads when i am jamming the throttle from zero to full um you know i don't have a way to take temperature measurements of those things in that split second. So maybe that's what's happening. Maybe that's when the heat is being produced, but by the time you know we get them down and we feel that connector, which I've done, um, it's, it's cool by then. So I don't know, but it sucks to have to buy all new batteries and all new stators. Um, so it's, it's, it's gonna be a slow conversion for me. Um, for the 12 people that are in here, if you see, do me a huge favor, and if you see T-Motor F40 Pro 2, all right, the old ones, T-Motor F40 Pro 2, if you see these guys in the 6S or even the 5S KV, do me a favor and shoot me a link. T-Motor discontinued these. Um, and I really want, I, so I have 2400 and 2600 KV stators. Um, I really want to get the 5S, I think they're like 2100 or 2150 stators, and I do also want to get the 6S stators so that I can just bounce them around and, and do some testing there. Um, I also do need as many of the bells as I can get, um, since at some point here they'll all run out. Um, I scored a bunch from uh, Orta hooked me up with a bunch, the rest that... Uh, Rotorite had in stock. Uh, Ryan Harrell sending me some of his that he uh, ran testing on way back when. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just trying to scrounge them up from anywhere. I know GetFPV has a couple of the bells, but they're the Popo bells, which I don't like. The, the regular bells hold up a lot better. Um, so, yeah, if you guys see F40 Pro 2s, give me the heads up. I will love you 
until the day that I die. Dividing loves 2150. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> Screw you, Jamie. This is this is Jamie's fault. Jamie letting me fly her uh, rig last weekend is the reason that I'll that I have to. Uh, and I love her all the same for it um, because it's real. It, it really do, did. Um, there was something there. So uh, yeah, I, my 4S. It's not terrible timing either. My 4S batteries are kind of tired. Um, I just picked up a bunch from Wes. Uh, zero caution, but. That's fine. It'll move on. But yeah, I, I gotta do it. I gotta move towards success. I gotta at least have one rig with them. Twenty-one fifties on five and six. Yeah, I'll um, I'll do that if I have to. I've been running twenty-four hundreds on five S for a little bit here, just for fun, every so often, um, and that's super fun. So I mean, if I can only find the the F forty Pro twos with the um, at the twenty-one fifty kV, I'm fine with that. Um, going from four to five S will give me in theory, you know, because of math, 50% of the advantage that going from 4S to 6S will. So that's fine too. All right, so now let's get these nuts on. Let's get our nuts on, guys. We say, um, I'm just going to put it directly on here because I want to really get it in there. And there's nothing plastic around these that uh, this shit's going to melt. So, fuck it. Let's just plop it in there. Shout out to Bardwell for the amazing video that he made way back when about the um, Loctite with a Brush by Mercury Adhesives. And... One second, I will look back up and see if there's some interesting questions or thoughts or curse words. All right, let me scroll up a little bit. RDQ has what, Noah? The um. Oh yeah, right. They do. They do. They do. I'm uh, I'm waiting for them to. I I don't want to pay 26 bucks a motor, so I'm gonna um, I'm going to um roll the dice and, and see if I can catch them on clearance. Clearance, Clarence. Um, but I do want to like compile all the sites that have them and just kind of leave those tabs opened. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, I'll turn I turn rotation off. Good, Spud. Uh, when you're 250 pounds, grip strength trying to hold yourself in becomes a thing. Yeah, it's very true. 1.5G struggle is real. God damn right it is. The Miata, my Miata will actually spike like 1.8 on street tires, man. That thing is an animal. Um, but it'll sustain 1.4, 1.5. Uh, ZD says 20 gauge on his build, some 3S packs. I bought came with, si yeah, the 16 gauge is way, way, way overkill. Um, Dividing Loves 2150. Yeah, Jamie does have my first 6S video. I got to get that from her. Um, Jim, you still in here? Um, I gotta get that from her. That was fun. Her yard is incredibly fun to fly. Especially in the pitch black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my god, 2150s. Nice. Nice. Um, tell John I have a video dedicated to him. No idea if he's ever actually watched it. John, uh, Schizo? Or John from, um, um, Superfly. No Mind is the title. Instructor grabs his leg. Oh, God. That's a terrible instructor, Guillermo. Need to lock my screws on my PLA frame. Won't be able to lock tight. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's annoying. Well, that's funny. Schizo. Okay. Yeah, I'll let him know. Um, should be some sales coming up. Yeah, I hope so, Noah. All right, let's get these on before. Uh, this is a uh, jeweler's like gem picker-upper. Uh, a couple bucks on Amazon, and it's really good at picking up these M2 nuts from the outside, so you can get them started. And then once they're started, I'll just go on the other side and spin the uh, spins the screw. 
if anybody really needs to know what these are called and somebody can't if somebody finds these little guys on uh, Amazon post a link if you, oh I, you know what I might not let you guys post links but just call out whatever you search for or worst case if you guys can't find it I will um, dig up my Amazon purchase history come on there it is man it is getting hotter than a motherfucker in this room here so I am in it's called a den they called it a den uh, the apartment complex being they and uh, it's technically like a spare bedroom but not really and I have just completely taken it over that, that wasn't the uh, initial plan but um, we were, Chris and I were gonna share this room uh, but she was not using it and uh, I started to I needed to work from home so I just stole the entire room and uh, this room only has one air conditioning duct but it has my 10 year old big ass Mac tower with four hard drives a big old shit video card um, these two 23 inch old ass monitors um, Apple monitors I've got the lights on so it looks pretty behind me although it looks like I forgot to turn some of them on might as well because the ones I forgot to turn on are LEDs anyway um, and it gets hot in here I, I, there's a there's an overhead ceiling fan but uh, you know I'll turn that up because I'm absolutely dying um, usually I keep the doors closed if Kristen's trying to watch TV in the living room, but she is in the bedroom doing freelance graphic design. Well, that reminds me. <clears throat> I'll give you guys a little bit more light. I have my light stand set up from uh, when Joshua was coming, so I can give you guys a, another little, little hit of light on this. Make it look fancy. Um, all right, I'm super behind on these, uh, I almost said contacts. What are these? Chats. Chatties. Uh, uh, I see Noah is messaging, Facebook messaging me links to those motors. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated. All right, where do we leave off? Sales coming up soon. There we go. Nut grabber. I'm not going to say the F word, but F yeah. Uh, Jason says, is there a chart? for size and kv motor that can help anyone build a quad there isn't but that sounds like something that's really good for uh my patreon so i am gonna leave a note uh because that's pretty awesome so basically the way i'm gonna try to run the um i will jamie i just saw your text um i'm gonna run i think the uh my patreon basically as a message board and any of the tiers three dollars five bucks ten whatever you want to spend just gets you access and i'm just gonna dump information into the posts in that patreon um i think that's how um i think that's how bardwell basically does it it's just nice and simple i i, I don't necessarily want to get all hung up with the um with the different tiers and rewards and all that stuff. I don't know. Maybe I will down the road, but definitely not initially. Um, but I'm going to use the little description field as a, a scratch pad for some of these ideas. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now off camera. Let me just type this in because that's an awesome, awesome, awesome idea, Jason. Um, and we're going to talk about it in a second here. Um, but... I will forget if I don't do this absolutely right now. So, uh, chart with motor sizing compare, no, um, chart with, uh, motor to prop combos, proven motor, um, no, chart with whatever good good motor to prop combos micro micro motor 
All right, that is enough of a description for me to remember it. Uh, where's that save button? There it is. Okay, cool. Good motor experiences versus bad. Yeah, that works too. Yeah, I'm sure I'll I'll talk about what doesn't work and why. Um, all right, cool. Uh, back to it. Uh, not to be confused with <laughs> Nut Cobbler. Oh boy. Spudnik, um, affiliate link opportunity. What do you mean? Was was I talking about a? Uh, oh, the 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 gem tweezers. Is that what you're talking? About? I gotta get that. Uh, I gotta talk to Joshua about the affiliate link thing. Um, word on the street is there there is actual money to be made from that, um, and that's that would be cool. If it would like we were talking about earlier, it would be really cool to be able to offset some of the cost of this um, hobby. Ugh, that thing fell off. <sighs> because I do a lot of testing, and um, testing can get kind of expensive. So, yeah. And, and I really do try to share as, as, as often as I can um, with everybody, because I just, I, I want every, especially with micros, like, there's, there's such potential, I want everybody to have a really good experience, I want everybody to have a micro that flies well, um, and it is way easier to buy or build one that flies like a box of smashed assholes than, um, one that flies good, so... I'm in it for the love of micros, but with uh, an $8,000 vet bill in the last month, I ain't going to be testing shit. <laughs> so there it is. Now you guys know how insane. Uh, Chris and I are not, uh, more than likely, not having children, so our animals right now, animal, um, is our child. And uh, I think I read something a while back that, like, kids typically cost, like, ten grand a year or something like that. So we're still ahead. We keep telling ourselves that uh, we're still... we're still ahead versus all of our friends who have children. Um, and, uh, yeah, hey, it's only money, right? Can't take it with you. And uh, at the rate that the Amazon is burning, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's certainly not going to be good. It's not going to help things. Having the lungs of the planet. Although, I don't believe that the Amazon is actually the lungs of the planet. I believe the Amazon is, like, the storage space for the carbon in the form of dead animals. Um, that blows into the ocean to generate the algae bloom. Um, I think it's like 98% of our oxygen is, is produced by um, algae blooms in the ocean. And I believe the Amazon doesn't necessarily produce that much oxygen. It just produces the food for that algae to eat to bloom to make the oxygen so that we can breathe. Don't fact check me on that. Matter of fact, fact check me on that. Because if I'm wrong, I want to know what, uh... Spudnik, yeah, man. Well, it depends. Um, if you're serious, let's talk. For absolutely sure. I won't tune it if it doesn't have motors that I know are tunable. Um, I will say that. That's why I'm not just going to give you an absolutely yes for sure. Because the Emacs 1606s, for example, um, are just untunable. They're, they're just too notchy. They are a dedicated hardcore race motor, and they will not tune well on a freestyle rig. Um, or I'll say they won't tune right on the Acrobat frame because I haven't tried on other frames. The, um, the uh, alien-style frames 
have something going for them in terms of stiffness in that the, the vertical standoffs box the center section of the frame in. Um, take a shoe box and take the lid off and bend the shoe box like this, right? Bend the shoe box like this. Well, this, this little case will do it, right? So this is really easy right now because there's no top on the box. It's just like a bathtub or like a convertible. When people talk about why convertibles are so floppy, this is why. This represents a convertible right now. The soft top doesn't give any real stability on the top. A convertible is like a shoebox with the lid off. Well, put that lid back on the shoebox and now try to rotate it. And it, you can actually see what's happening on this. This is a great example of that. You can see that latch moving. If that latch was permanently held, this thing wouldn't budge. Um, and that's what will happen when you put a lid on a shoebox. So that, that's what the center section of an alien frame is doing. It boxes itself in, and this structure, the, the center section becomes really rigid to twisting. So what that does is it, um, it allows the arm, the only flex that you really get is in the arm, the movement of the arm. The acrobat frame doesn't have those vertical standoffs. So the, um, and I believe this is one of the reasons why Tommy went with these, is because with just an X layout, the arm is just going to wobble like hell because it's going to bend the whole center section of the frame. By him doing these extra supports, he actually turns this into an A-arm. It's the shape of an A, right? Um, and an A-arm is going to, at the very least, prevent this thing from, from wiggling. The, um, you know, on a regular frame, you can take a motor and twist it a, a good amount, especially because it's not the strong... The twisting direction is not the strong direction of the... Of the um, of the carbon fiber but uh, yeah this frame when it bends like this it doesn't have that center section so you actually get a little bit more deflection in the center of the frame so I don't know maybe that has something to do with why those 1606's didn't work um, whew, that was a close one knocked this over while it was uh, opened um, so yeah I don't know maybe 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 not I haven't really talked to anybody else that's run those 1606s on any other frames. Although, no, I shouldn't say that. Tangy Butt Frog, who has the best FPV name in the game, um, in case anyone missed it or is still in disbelief at the, what I just said. Yes, you heard it right. Tangy Butt Frog. Um, he's been running those 1606s on a gecko. Um... Oh, but you know what? He's he's picking up a um, he's picking up a session with them, and they work totally fine with that. That amount of extra weight, um, and just the fact that GoPro designs a hell of a camera that doesn't have jello issues. Um, yeah, because when I had the session on this with the 1606s, they were totally fine. There was no jello. There was no BS. Oh, you know, that's a good, that's funny. I have a little tiny edit up of that. Um, one of the things that I'm going to put in the um, in the Patreon is unlisted videos uh, from my YouTube page. And I have one from what I, I called it the Fat Crow Brat, F-A-T-C-R-O-B-R-A-T, because it was so unbelievably heavy with that session on top and a big old TPU mount. Um, so I'm going to go over to the Patreon right now and I'm going to post an un... whatever, unpublished video over there. And if you want to see it, you're going to have to pay $3 a month or $3 one time and then just cancel. I don't care. <laughs> uh, let me find it. It's called Tuning the Fat Crow Brat. There it is. What was funny about this is in the goggles there was jello, um, which is why I kept landing to adjust the tune. Uh, but then when I came home <laughs> and looked at the footage, it was beautifully smooth, which you guys will see. Um, putting it over there. I'll show you guys. You guys can watch me do it. Ninety-nine minutes. What? Good lord! Uh, this is going to be patrons only, <laughs> and we're going to say tuning 
the fat crow brat. And I'm gonna really need to tell a story. Uh, patrons only, published now. Sweet. More super secret, patron only um, content. Anybody that's really dying to see it that doesn't have $3, just message me and I'll probably be easy to convince. Um, <laughs> All right, let me get back. I saw a couple questions. Uh, nut grabbers, awesome. Uh, dur, 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 dur. Because five inches is standard right now, more people picking up micros. Your knowledge and experience with micros is very valuable. Thank you for that. Um, applaud you for capitalizing on that. Thank you, man. Means a lot. Um, F20, 1408, 3750s. I would be willing to take a crack at it. Oh wait, let me reframe this. I've got like a lens flare from this extra camera that I put up. What a hot mess. Um, I would be willing to, to take a crack at it, but I'm going to say this. You, I think that you will get more value out of, and it's going to cost you the same, to get... Um, oh, really, Noah? All right, well, I trust Noah... Um, which makes me want to try, but let me finish where I was going with that because I, I think it's a better solution for you. Um, wait, and that instead of paying me to tune it, buy these motors. You'll pay about the same, um, and then you can sell your F20. Your these will be F20s. These are going to be F20 Pro. Th Am I not supposed to be talking about? No, I think I'm alright. Um, these are going to be F20 Pro threes. Um, just buy these and put them on and your existing tune will probably be amazing. Um, and if it's not, I will just send you my tune because we'll have a similar enough setup where I'll back my tune off a little bit and just send it to you. Um, I would rather you do that. I would rather you get motors that are going to be this smooth and buttery um, and make a little bit less power. Frankly, 1408 is just way too much. So these will save you a little bit of weight. You'll have a little bit less power. You'll still have tons of power. Um, plenty, plenty, plenty. Um, but you will end up with a rig that is less vibration prone, which I would rather you have that than you pay me um, 20 bucks an hour is what I would basically charge. Um, kind of getting started friend pricing, um, so to speak, and it, it would take more than one hour for sure. Um, yeah, I, I really, really try not to tune mechanically screwed up setups. Um, because it'll just, not mechanically screwed up, but I, I think you know what I mean. Just mechanically handicapped setups. I don't want to try to tune around that. Um, I want to find gear that's going to uh, work on a stock tune, basically. And then I can tweak it to be exactly what I want. Um, with the exception of some really high power stuff, a stock tune should be pretty damn good. Um, stock tune should fly really, really well. And if it doesn't, I tend to look at mechanical things before um, trying to tune around it. Um, yeah, use the stock pids for now. Uh, and then when these come out, uh, which should be soonish, um, pick up a set of them and, and hock your... Uh, Hock your F20s to somebody that's looking to race, because they'll F20 Pro 2s to somebody that's looking to race. Oh yeah, the Cobra motors are the other ones. What are the Cobra motors? 1407s, I think. Um, I always wanted to get a set of those Cobra motors, but it just never, never quite fell into place. All right, so this is in. Um, like I said, I ran the screws down from the top uh, because this shield is way too tight for the nuts. Um, and then I put the nuts with a ton of Loctite on the bottom. Um, hopefully they don't back out. If they do back out, I will put a longer M2 screw through here and I'll run Nylock. You can now get uh, M2 Nylock, uh, which I should have done just now. I, I'm just realizing, but whatever. I didn't, and we're moving on. Um, so yeah. What's next? Uh, flight controller is next. So let's... Get this out of the way. 
Now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get... I'm actually going to screw it into the top. What did I do with the TPU for this thing? Where's the... Uh, where's the Acrobat TPU? Did I throw it in the drawer here? Don't... Don't... Oh, there it is. Okay. Alright. Crisis averted. Wish more M2 hardware was available. Uh, dividing... Um, uh, Pyrodrone has some good stuff. And actually, um, Rotor Riot has either Rotor Riot or Race Day Quads. Um, I try to buy things in that order. Rotor Riot first to support um, the pilots whose content that I love to watch. Um, they've got a really good selection of M2 hardware right now. Um, and like I said, if, if, if it's not on the Rotor Riot website, it's on the uh, Race Day Quads website. Um, I was actually really impressed by how much M2 hardware that they had. They even had a little kit like this with a bunch of the different sizes, which makes me want to scream because mine, I, like, ordered... All, I mean, most of these came from uh, motors and stuff like that, and I just hoard... I never throw hardware away. Um, so the majority of these are just from motors and stuff, but, like, these longer ones, I like, I bought... And now you can just buy a kit for like, I don't know, 10 bucks. Uh, standoffs. What are you using M2 standoffs for? I, I have a couple that I got off of a, a shop that went away a long time ago, but... Um, oh, for your custom build, huh? Um, screw it, use the plastic ones. The plastic standoffs with the... Uh, which you can get on Amazon, a kit of the plastic standoff M2s. Um, the plastic standoffs with the metal screws is, are actually pretty damn strong. Um, yeah, I don't know where you would get these uh, aluminum standoffs. I don't remember where I got them from, but they're long gone. Alright. This guy can go away. Six of them. Jesus. Um, I'm tempted to send you mine because I've never used them. Well, I probably don't have the right height, though. What height do you need? I have two... I have four blue ones I'll totally send you, um, but the chances of them being the right height are pretty slim. These are 20 mil. If you want, I will for sure send you these four blue 20 mils. Um... And you might even be able to persuade me to send you two of these red ones. <laughs> Although, of course, the red ones are shorter. The red ones are 18 mil. Well, that's about the most annoying thing in the world. These purples are 20, though. I do want to keep the purples, but... Or eight even... 25. Ugh. I know. Yeah. Supply that's not 25 cents a piece. Well, if if something changes and you can use some 20s, hit me up. I, I don't I don't want these blue ones anymore. Um, done with blue. It's all red and purple from now on. Very important to color coordinate. Q fart sound now. I gotta get a little soundboard. That'd be fun. Uh, I want to screw the run cam into here just so it's out of the way, and not flopping around. So, we're going to do that with this. Man, I build slow as it is. I build glacial when I'm answering your guys' questions. <laughs> I got to get better at that. Um, all right, that's too long. So, it's probably going to be a 7. Let's go down here. I think this is the right length. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it bottoms. Too long. Wow, I can't believe it's a six. I did not think it would be that short. And 
I want to screw. When did I say that? I mean, I believe you. Sounds like something I would say. Oh yeah, that's perfect. <clears throat> Word to the wise, if you're going to use TPU camera mounting, always make sure that your screw is not too long to the point where it bottoms out in the camera because then you won't pull the camera into the TPU and it'll rotate on you in hard crashes. Um, make sure if anything the screw is a little bit too short to make sure that you're pulling the camera hard enough into the TPU that uh, it doesn't rotate on big slams because when they rotate on big slams and they have a plug header coming out the back um, it'll break the plug, he plug header right off and then you got to and then you got a solder director to this board, and it's just, don't do it. Learn from my mistakes. Um, Alright, so now we got to put this talon in. Yeah, the TPU totally works like nylon. Um, Hobby Wing X-Rotor Nano Stack, good for the Acrobrat. Absolutely not. Um, I ordered a Matek F411 from Pyrodrone, which is my preferred flight controller about a year ago. They didn't have it in stock. The only one that they had in stock was this Hobby Wing. Um, I was hot to trot to get the prototype Acrobrat built at that point. I just wanted to get testing done for Tommy. Um, so I swapped over to this one and then um, I just stupidly wanted to have um, this is too expensive. There's no reason for this to be so expensive. Same thing with the ESC. Um, but I just completely lost my mind at one point and I just had to have the full hobby wing stack like a total idiot. So I spent too much money on this ESC and it's it's nothing but I mean it's not bad. It's held up. It, it hasn't blown up yet. Um, but there's a bunch of things I don't like about them. They're too much money. Absolutely no reason to get them. Speedix, uh, you want Speedix GS25s for 45 bucks. It's a 32 bit 25 amp. Uh, 20 by 20 ESC with these uh, leads in a really cool spot. I love that they're there. It seems super awkward, but you mount this guy um, to the bottom like that. Those leads are as far away as possible from your video, uh, from your video wires. Which, my God, getting clean video in micros with banged up motors is so difficult. So I actually really like this super weird um, uh, battery pad location. Uh, and then $30, $32 uh, Talon flight controllers. This is it. There's no reason to get, in my opinion, anything other than these two. 32 bits, so you'll be ready for RPM filtering, um, and the Talon is just awesome. Uh, it's soft mounted with M4. Uh, the, the gummies, the grommets are M3, and then they give you inserts to neck it down to M2, so it'll mount anywhere. Black box, which is really, really nice on micros. Um, uh, the pads are laid out in a good kind of in, in good locations and yeah just a great flight controller um, although I haven't done a build with both of these before so technically speaking there could be there could be interference problems I can check it right now so this is what I was talking about with trying different orientations to use all the space. Um, so if I did it, battery leads going up, and I and I just sit here like this and, and just look, look at what hits. You know, line it up, see how close I can get them. Is there like one orientation that really slams them together um, like that? That's probably as low as it's going to go with the battery leads coming at the top like that. Um, and I like to run my battery leads out the side, again, just to get them the hell away from the video wires. Um, so, versus if I put it up like this, with the plug header going upwards, um, that's not too bad. That slammed pretty low. Let's see if we can get it even lower. Nope, that's not it. There it is. That's probably how I would end up mounting it. So that's not bad. That's a good amount of space in between the boards for a couple wires to run through. So that's that's kind of good. Every once in a while you'll get a a flight controller and an ESC that like every single orientation is a is a total nightmare um, like they'll just have tall stuff on all four sides and or just some weird combination but no this looks totally fine you, this is a there's a couple different ways to orient this that uh, slams it down nice and low 
So yeah. That is going to always be my recommendation for flight controllers and ESCs. Um, the Talons nowadays um, and the GS25. I'll bet the GS25 goes away sooner than later, though. Um, Speedix IS35 wasn't bad. Awesome. I love that because it goes up to 5S. Um, I might go that route down the road at some point with this guy. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't... I don't love the idea of 5S. I, from a battery weight standpoint, I don't agree with 5S on a micro um, because there aren't any like 300 mAh, MAH 5S batteries um, that are going to be light enough that I've seen. Uh, but we're in this situation where we just don't get a lot of KV choices on our motors and, and we're, we're limited by that. Um, so I would love to see what a 4000 KV motor on 3 inch props on an Acrobrat would be like on 5S voltage. Um, That'd be interesting. Although, now that I say that, this setup has too much power already. So that's stupid. Ignore everything I just said. Um, 4S is the jam on micros with 4,000 kV on 3-inch props. I don't... I don't see a point of building a micro that's any heavier than this, and at which point there's no reason to have any more power than what these are going to give you. So... There you go. You heard it here first. 4S is... Uh, 5 and 6S are dead to me on micros. Unless they come out with a motor that's like 3,500 3, kV and is amazing. So, there you go. Yeah, dividing. I get it, man. Me too. Although what's funny is the micro batteries last forever. They just hold up to like any abuse that I can send their way. So paying more money for them is actually uh, not that big a deal. Um, man, I'm getting tired, guys. What time is it? 10.45? Shit, I'm old. All right, I got to at least get a little bit done here. Got to get a little bit done. Man, it is hotter than hell in this room. I got to get the... Oh, I turned the fan off. That's why it's so hot. It's... Uh, I pulled the thing once, thinking that would turn it up, but I turned it off. Oh, now we're doing it. Here we go, guys. We're going full beans on the fan. I think that's a little much. Let's try it one down. Watch out, the camera's pointing towards the fan. Kristen's not wearing pants right outside the doorway. Well, now she's hiding. No, I'm good. <laughs> All right, we'll give that a shot. If there's, like, wind noise or anything, let me know. Um, but I got to do something about this heat. Good Lord. Sweat my nips off. Ooh, Mr. Tux has a nano cam. Do you like it? Is it, uh, do you have the new Predator? Is it a Predator? The new Fox Ear one? Frame has a micro mount, uh, so I'd have to get an adapter more cost. Don't have a 3D printer. Um, can you suggest another frame with a nano cam mount? I cannot. I don't know what any. I don't know any frames with nano cam mounts. But if those nano cameras start outperforming this one, uh, the Micro Eagle, then maybe my five-inch frame that is was pretty far along before Rotorius kind of changed hands. Um, if that ever comes out and the nano cams are good, maybe we'll size it for a nano. You never know. Um, what was your previous message, Tux? Hit me. TBS Source Micro. I don't even know. I, I'm not even familiar with the TBS Source Micro. I gotta get. I gotta get my TBS knowledge under control. I don't know squat about their products. Um. All right. What do we got here? We've got some power for the Pro 32. Um, yeah, I'll solder it up while it's, on the, uh, while it's on the standoff, so we'll be fine. All right, so on the monitor over there, I've got the uh, wiring diagram. Are there pads that I can pull the motor signals from? There are not. Yeah, I don't love that. 
Uh, looked into the dribble, dribblet that you recommended, but think it's not a good option. Can't find it from any German vendor. Oh, that's a pain. Um, get in the, I, I don't know, I, I would just say jump in the, um, in the Get FPV Underground, uh, Get FPV, great, Rotorious Underground um, Facebook group and, and see what they've, ask it there, ask those guys. There's a bunch of really knowledgeable guys in there. They're in Europe. Um, so you don't have to deal with that. Man, that's a pain. I, it's such a thing to like... Oh yeah, Amax. Amax, that's right. Um, they're over there. They have some really nice stuff. I, it's so funny. Like, it's it just totally take it for granted that like everything can be shipped within the U.S. That's such a uh, white male American privilege situation. So... All right. I need to feed 5 volt to the VTX, so let's do it from, that's the buzzer up there, that's a weird place to put the buzzer pads, huh, it's pretty slick actually, we got the ground, let me make sure that this is the F4 one, I have, yeah, this is the F405, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine, right? Because this is a this is a VL Heli S ESC anyway. Okay, this will be cool. Um, well, I can't do that because the USB port goes forward. So I'm either here or the other way, or I can flip it. So the reason why I'm do reason why I'm doing this now is. I want to pick which 5 volt pad I run the, um, although I guess I do have enough length on the wires to run it to the side, not to the front though, and I really do try to run these things, I do try to get the VTX outputs in the back, um, just to clean everything up. Um, yeah, let's see, how do I want to do this? Oh, you know, okay, so here's another here's another trick on the Acrobat. Because the clean plate moves around, um, take your USB port and put it under. Hide it under there, and now, with it mounted like this, the clean plates, uh, the clean vertical side plates can move all to hell they want, and they're not going to smash your, uh, your USB port to hell, which a whole bunch of us prototype testers figured out all at once when we got the proto frames. Um, which is kind of annoying. I didn't break mine on my flight controller. I broke it on the um, I broke it on the run cam board actually, which was no big deal because I, I could just pull the memory card out to dump it. So basically, it's got to go either like this or like this because we need the USB port facing outwards. Um, there are no uh, there are no things getting in the way. So, if I run a motor wire there, it will have enough room. Okay, so I'm going to run it forward. I'm going to run it with this, um, uh, this plug header forward because that will allow me to eat up some of the room of this patch cable. It's, I have the ESC with the, um, the plug header downwards and in the back. Um, so I will run this in between the, the two boards and bloop, just plug it in right there and that way there's not a ton of, that way I don't have to go from here to here and figure out what to do with all this wire and I've got a rat's nest in the back and it's just um, bad form. So what do we got here? Um, all right, wiring diagram says... That's on the bottom. TX6, ARC6, telemetry, ARC3. And then up here. Oh, terrific. Okay, so cam. Uh, where are the VTX outputs? Cam. What? Cam S. What's Cam S mean? Cam S and Cam C. Come on, guys. Silk screened on here. 
So I have to figure out cam S versus cam C. Which one means video in, which one means video out. C versus S. Cam S. What did S mean? Hey, uh, Noah, you have one is cam control. That's what cam C is. Nice. Cam C is cam control. So what's cam S? Is that in? What do the other, the other pads do? I guess I have to look at the, uh, the wiring diagram for the bottom. Cam signal, that's what the S is for. Yup, cam signal. Okay, so that's the in. Where the hell did they put the out? On the F4 one. Cam plus minus cam S. What? Did you guys forget to put video out on this? There it is, VTX S. Okay, of course it's on the complete ass opposite side. You jerks. Ah, uh, well that's annoying. Um, oh, I also need to remember to bridge. Um, bridge a couple of these guys. <laughs> Dividing says his cats now run when they hear I need a seat power up. Oh man. Pavlov's cats at their best. Oh man, this this is annoying. See, this is when I just walk away. Like I'll I'll just get to this point, I'll get annoyed, and I'm like, alright, I'll walk away, come back to it tomorrow. It's not like I can't do it, but like now I'm frustrated and bad things happen when I build Don't build angry! Guys, don't don't drive angry. Don't build angry either. Should I bail? <laughs> Do I bail, guys? Um, the other option is I spin it around and I just deal with there being a fucking rat's nest of of signal wire, which is, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's just so goddamn annoying. So basically, if I don't run... Well, let's think about it this way. Okay, so the bad... The, the, in my opinion, the bad part about um, take a step back. The good part, the, the positives of running it this way and dealing with this rat's nest of shit is going to be that the video is going to come out of the. Well, it's actually going to come out of the FPV cam, um, and it's going to go into the front of the board. Signal in is going to be here, and then the board is going to put that video signal through the. Um, OSD chip on the bottom and then it's going to send it out the back here. So there's no wire running the distance of this flight controller and that also means there's no wire running along all this garbage on the ESC and specifically this battery ground wire. The, the noisiest part of any build are the battery wires and this is one of the reasons I really don't like this Hobbywing um, ESC is that they put, and they do this on their full-size one, and it drove me just as insane, they put the battery pads um, 90 degrees to the to the motor pads. And on a big build, you can get away with that by just spinning this thing and putting the motor, uh, the, the motor pads front and back, but there's just too much going on to do that here. Um, I really prefer the battery leads to be on the side. Um, so my other option is, and I think I'm going to deal with the rat's nest guys, because my other option is to put this up front and then um, I have to run the video wire up to the front. Oh yeah, and that's going to really suck because then I'm going to have to run the um, I'm going to have to run the VTX wire across those leads, and then I'm going to have to run the cam signal wire across the leads too to get it to the back here. So that sucks. I, I could desolder these battery leads and like run them at the side. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm just not, not going to do it.
get the view hours up. Yeah, I budget. I don't actually know if the um, if the live streams count towards the view hours. Um, I'm still stuck at 727, and I need to get to 4,000. God damn, it's gonna take forever. <laughs> oh, that's that's gonna be a humble goal. Um, oh God, Spud, I would not take that project on. Does uh, so Tommy was trying to design a 20 by 20 flight controller, and like, I don't talk to Tommy a lot, but we we really get into it when we talk and man some of the problems he was having and like oh there's just so much going on there's so many things to lay out and like what's kind of nice is Talon and Maytech and, and there, there's some guys who've really done a, a very very good job at it um it's just impossible it's impossible to design to design a flight controller that's going to work with every setup because there's a you know every different ESC has the motor pads in different places some of them bump the motor pads out like this one and then you run into interference and, and packaging problems oh my god the the amount of um the amount of variables is just ridiculous and then you know you put in six months of work you come out with it and in a week the technology changes and and your f4 board is now useless because there's all f7s or h7s or you know who the hell knows what's next um so yeah, I'm going to, basically I'm making this decision based on, I think the video will be cleaner not having to pass across these versus having this shit all bunched up here. Because um, this is going to have VBAT in it, and it's also going to have the motor signals, which are pretty much nothing, it's basically VBAT. So this is going to be putting VBAT nonsense sort of near the video wire but i'll push this off to i'll keep these pushed off to the side maybe i'll loop them under the uh under the battery wires or something like that under the motor wires rather um to keep this over pushed out of the way and then i'll run the um i'll make sure that i keep the video wire as far away from them as possible so i will make that work let me see real quick if i have any um wires that are shorter than this usually this is the shortest i could cannibal i do have a wiring harness from this is already hughes um i think you can also get on your yeah you can um i'm not unsoldering the leads well so here's the here's the problem with unsold with desoldering the leads um the wire is still going to have to pass through it's going to still have to pass right past them um yeah it's desoldering the leads is is not going to happen because it's i'm still going to have to run the video lead and the vtx lead across the face of the um of the battery lead um, it'll just be at a 90 and then it'll have to run down the length of the esc um and i think that that's going to cause more problems than um dealing with what i'm dealing with Rotori, get this. This is the, the pin breakout kit. It's like $4 or $7 or something. This is so nice to have. Um, I've always just hoarded my um, my cables, so uh, I'm fine. But for you guys that aren't going to buy 15 different sets of micro motors, ESCs, flight controllers... That was probably really loud. I apologize for that. Um, what I was saying is I have these little hobby wing jib jabs that I've been saving for a rainy day or more accurately, it's really the perfect situation. And I think this might be it. Uh, the question is where the hell did I put them? Here's where I put them. Uh, there we go. One side of the leads. Uh, shield the wires with heat shrink or braided cables. So, Spudnik, I talked to my dad at length about shielding these video wires. Um, and he gave me some leads on how to do it. At the end of the day, the they made the wires kind of thick. And they made the wires very... Um, it's basically like a, I 
I think it's kind of in Ethernet. I think in, in Ethernet, one of them or two of them are shielded. Um, but basically, it, it's it's not this anymore. It's not a nice, malleable, bendy 30-gauge wire anymore. It's a monstrosity, and I just didn't want to deal with it. The I want someone else to try it, <laughs> if I'm totally honest. I want somebody else to guinea pig it, um, and then and then I want to steal it. <laughs> it's, it's really what's going on. So you go do it with a noisy quad and tell me if it works. Because if I go through all that trouble and it doesn't make much of a difference, I'll be pissed. And, and, I, and quite frankly, I just don't have the time anymore. Um, so yeah, th this came with a... Uh, with the full size 30 by 30 hobby wing. Um, so I will just cannibalize this. And I actually only need to cannibalize one side of this, which is pretty nice. Um, I just have to figure out which side that is really quickly. So I need to look at the hobby wing pinout, which I should have right here. Okay, so the hobby wing pinout, mine is upside down. All right, so where are the pins? The pins are on the bottom, which is where the slot on the side is. Yes, okay. So if the pins are on the bottom, then the way that this wiring diagram is assuming is that the pins are on the top because I have the ESC flipped over. So this direction, so that means the signals are on the left. Okay, good. So that means this side stays and this side gets uh, cannibalized. Pins on top, signal on the left. Yeah, see this has the signal on the right. Cool. So I used to do, and I just forget. I just twist it around and I forget. Pins on bottom, pins on top, signal on left. Okay, this is the one that's getting canalized. I used to do this with a exacto blade, but you kind of have to have three hands to do it that way. Um, these little tiny sharp ass tweezers are a godsend for doing this. Because there's absolutely no way it'll focus on this, but. Um, ah, ferret cage, there we go. Done and done. Good, good line of sight rig. Best line of sight rig ever. Um, <laughs> yeah, you just put it on your little flappy, bend it upwards as little as you can so that you hopefully don't break it off, and pull. I don't think I've ever done six of these in a row before. I usually just make the existing one work. Come on, get out of there. I hate having to do this, my god. Especially when, like, I need the... Now that I have that kit from Rotor Riot, it's, it's a little different, but... I used to, like, run into situations where I would only have one of these plastic bastards with the right... Like, like seven. You know, it, it would... The ESC would need, like... A seven pin connector so I would only have one of these plastic things so I would have to sit here like don't break these little tabs don't break the little tabs and that sucked but now that I have that kit it kind of doesn't matter the only reason I'm I'm being careful on this one and not just like tearing these out is this little connector is a little bit unique in that it doesn't have the um, the little flaps on the side and what's cool about that is this allows you to plug this in if you have like a this is like a six, I think. If you have like a 10 pin header, you can actually plug this into the 10 pin header and then plug another one in next to this because it doesn't have the little flappies on the side. Kind of slick. I uh, I really dig what Hobby Wing did. And that, that's why Hobby Wing did that because you had to plug this sixer and like a four into their um, flight controller because this six pin had VBAT and motor signal and then they had a separate four pin with uh, current and five volt for some reason. And it didn't even have telemetry. It wasn't even a 32-bit ESC. Uh, 
Yeah, that's why I'm trying to save this connector and not wreck these little flaps because this might come in handy someday. Although, I, I, I mean, I, I could just take a pair of dikes and cut the goddamn side flaps off of another one of these, but that's not my style. I'm going, oh man, the whole 10 volt Beck thing can eat me on the, on the new ESCs. Especially because the, um, the, the goddamn 30 by 30, uh, Radix requires 5 volt in. I had to, like, hoard a bunch of ESCs that have 5 volt Becks in them just so I didn't have to run a stupid, annoying little external 5 volt Beck, um, for my Radix flight controller. It was super duper annoying. Most first world of problems, right there. I had to hoard four and one ESCs with five volt backs on them, so that my fifty-five dollar Radix flight controller will work without needing to run an external five volt regulator that was three dollars. That's the building clean sickness. But that being said, that um, that's one more component to fail. Although you could totally make the argument that the the five volt back on that little iFlight thing that I just held up and the one in the ESC are the exact same thing, so there there's no difference in failure rate. And quite frankly, getting it off of the ESC with all that other nonsense on it um, is probably going to help it. Um, and it makes it easier to replace, so there's a lot of good things about doing that, none of which I'm paying any attention to. I'm just, you know, stand fast with, it has to be perfectly clean. So, Willie, talking about hot motors, um, first ESC setting was DMAG off. Really? Huh. What's, uh, I forget, what's DMAG? I, I don't get into BL Heli all that often. DMAG off. I wonder if that's a uh, wacky flight one thing. That's interesting. I, I, I saw that video pop up. Um, Wood and I talk a lot. And uh, I meant to watch it, but I had something going on. And then that thing happened where it fell far enough down in my YouTube subscriptions where I didn't see it again. So this last one is being a real dick. If you guys hadn't noticed. I think I might have just gotten it. Nope. So when they're being a dick, push the wire in. Because it's like a little hook. Kind of that grabs onto the plastic. And that's exactly what was happening. I pushed the wire in and now we're fine. Although I also bent that tab back a little too far. Yeah, it's a tiny little hook that grabs on the plastic, and if you're pulling on the wires, it makes it harder to lift the plastic bastards up. Um, so I want to save this, and I want to put it in a super secret special spot so it doesn't get confused with all the other ones. Is that this? Yeah, that's this. This is my weirdo spot for those little... Molly characters or whatever the hell it is. Tux, thanks for hanging, brother. See you next time. I'm going to try to do this every Monday night after Bardwell. I'll do the, uh, the 8 to 10 shift. Holy shit, it's 11 o'clock. I am out of here, guys. This is ridiculous. I cannot believe that took so long. Um, PLA bill defaulted to low. Oh, right. DMAG is on low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, man. I turned DMAG up to high. Not high. I do medium high. Um... Huh. Well, there's one more thing for us to screw around with. Noah, I will see you next time. Um, yeah, all right, I'm going to stop on this, too. i gotta, uh, I got to do some non-FPV-related things tonight. Um, or rightfully so, Kristen will stab me in the eye. Oof, that was a close one. All right, guys, thanks for hanging. You all rule. Um, check out my Patreon. 
do other fun things, fly stuff, um, encourage me to keep doing these live streams, again, Monday nights uh, after Broadwell, so 8 to 10, and um, maybe I'll do another one this week. Um, that's all I can think of. Thanks for hanging, guys. Later. Uh.